Hey Flasstube, it is Michelle McGraw from Made by Michelle McGraw, and I am here today with my seventh floss tube video. So I'm here to talk to you about my stitching, and um, I've got some, a little bit of haul and some new project bags to show you, and I have stuff heaped everywhere, so let's get into it. So um, the last time I did a video, I did the Epic Storybook Sal, and if you are interested in joining me and everybody else who is stitching that, it is hashtag Epic Storybook Sal, and I have a separate video for that. So if you go um, to my channel and you hit videos, and then you can go, I think it's, I called it Floss Tube Six and a Half, Epic Storybook Sal, and that explains it all. Um, shows you everything and where to get everything, and everything is in the description box in that. Um, and we would love to have you join us. So um, the last video that I did, I was fixing to go to a girls trip, girls Disney trip. Um, so we went to Disney World, me and three other girlfriends, and um, it was a lot of fun. We got to do things that we don't always get to do or the kids don't wanna do. Um, we did food and wine. That was a lot of fun to try out different stuff. Um, the cider barn was awesome. Um, we enjoyed that. We enjoyed just a lot of different stuff that we don't normally get to do. Um, it was hot, very, very hot. Um, and so to answer a question, I did not see Priscilla from Stitching with the Housewives. She was actually in Disney World when I was there. It was very funny because I would sit down to check my phone and it would see her posting pictures from whatever park she was in that day. And a lot of times it was the same park I was in. But Disney World is huge and we were going like mad people. Um, so I never did run into her because I would have taken a selfie with her. Wouldn't that have been awesome? But um, never saw her. Um, we, uh, two, me and two of my other girlfriends did the four parks in a day challenge. So you basically go into the park and you have to do at least one major um, thing in the, uh, one major ride. We did more than that, but we did at least one major ride in each park we went to. And we did four parks in a day. And it was a fun challenge. Um, it would have been more enjoyable had it not been like 90 degrees outside or 97 or whatever it was. But, you know, that's Florida. So, you know, we were there um, to enjoy Disney and we did, we were just very sweaty doing it. So, um, I did take a small project into Disney and I will show you, um, that now. This is not the bag I took it in. I actually took it in a teeny tiny bag and had it in my purse, but I did not do a lot of stitching actually, but there are some rides that I don't ride. So if my girlfriends wanted to do that, I just sat down and stitched. So, um, I got this, which is called Christmas Jeep from the Mindful Stitching Company. It's off of Etsy and, um, that's the pattern. I simply took, hold on, let me do this. I took a old, um, this is an old pot holder so it can hold my pattern. And that slipped in my bag very easily. They never said anything about my embroidery scissors, but I did take a pair that I didn't care if they um, confiscated. Um, I kitted this up and I did get a little stitching done on it. I got most of the tree. And that's really the only time that I have worked on this. It's a little wrinkly. <laughs> As you can tell, it was stuffed out of my purse, but that, that's the only time I've worked on this. I'm gonna actually start it. I have, um, we own two Jeep Wranglers. So um, I have a Jeep, mine is royal blue and my son's is orange. And so I'm actually gonna stitch one of these for a Christmas ornament for him. And then I have um, another one planned for myself. They're really quick. You know, it's not a hard pattern, very easy, adorable. But since we love Jeeps, um, I thought that would make a cute Christmas ornament for him. And I wanna do a Christmas ornament per child every year. So that's gonna be his. So I took that into Disney. I stitched on the People Mover, which was one of my Instagram posts. 
If you don't follow me on Instagram, it is made by Michelle McGraw. Easy. Um, but my girlfriends are like, you have to stitch on the people mover. So I got it out and stitched on the people mover and thought that was kind of fun. Um, I didn't mind. I love to sit and people watch and stitch. And so it, that was a fun kind of challenge for me to take it in. Like I said, I didn't get any heavy stitching done, but I was able to work on it a little bit. So it was fun. It was worth it. Um, I had another question whether my bracelets are Pandora. They are. Um, I always wear this one. They, these two that I have on today, I actually have four bracelets. The main one that I wear has, a, has it's all um, Disney charms. So all of them are different Disney charms on there. I don't, there's no great way to show you any of those, but they're all Disney charms, random charms that I've bought or my kids bought me. And then I got another bracelet down at Disney because I'm a pass holder and you actually get a discount on several of the stores. So I was able to save some money on charms that I bought at Disney and um, I think you get 20% off. And I was able to pick up a couple more. They had an exclusive Star Wars set and I'm a huge Star Wars fan. So I picked up those charms and I actually bought a new bracelet down there because it was so pretty. Um, why not, right? Um, I actually went to look at the Little Mermaid charms. I have a beach um, bracelet that I have that's like all teal um, or aqu aquamarine, probably not teal, aquamarine. The Little Mermaid charms were too green for that bracelet. So I actually ended up getting just Sebastian and put him on that bracelet. So I got a couple charms and that was kind of fun. And so if you didn't know that, you can save 20% uh, on um, and it's the store that has the, the Pandora jewelry in Disney, um, in Magic Kingdom, uh, the last fancy store on the right when you walk in. I don't know the name of it, um, but it has like Dooney and Burks in there and it has a whole Pandora section. And so I bought a couple things. So if you didn't know that, pass holder discount saves you some money. Um, there you go. All right. So. I don't have many finishes and I did a thing. So I decided I have a lot of Halloween whips that are not gonna get finished by Halloween, not going to get finished, washed, and fully finished by Halloween. So I decided those were gonna come off of my Ikea cart, which is where I put my whips. I know you guys can't see it well. I've tried to show it before, but it's, it's the cart from Ikea, but this is what I, um, so I can move it around. It easily sides on my hardwood floors. Um, all my whips are always in project bags in there. Um, so I decided I'm gonna put those on the shelf in my craft room. I don't know that they're gonna stick in there until, you know, a year from now, but they're gonna be um, shelved for a little bit. So, um, and that's okay. Um, I will get to them. I have one fully finished, not fully finished, finished, but I wanna show you the pattern and I don't know where I put the pattern. I thought I pulled it, so let me, I'll show you um, some of my whips and some of what I have kitted up all at once because, wait a minute, here it is. Okay, so these are two that I put on the shelf so, and I just dropped some of it. Um, so, Eek Boo Hiss from Lizzie Kate. And I did the hiss. So, this is my finish. And I did it on, I think this is, um, hold on, a viewer asked me, so let me get exactly what I did it on so you can know. I think it's nutmeg, 14 count nutmeg, but let me, yes, this, oh, this is 16 count nutmeg. Okay, 16 count nutmeg, the colors pop on this. I love this. I want to finish um, Eek and Boo. I'm hoping you guys can see that but they're not gonna get done this year. So I'm shelving that project. Um, 
I still have everything, everything kitted up in my bag and it's gonna go on the shelf in my craft room and I'll revisit again. I often like to cross stitch Halloween because it's my favorite season to cross stitch. I love the colors. So I might pull that out this spring when I just want fall colors or this summer when I'm anticipating a cool down. <laughs> um, I might pull that out. The other one that I shelved is Little Quaker Halloween. This is a free pattern, so this is why I can show it to you. Go to Fat Quarter Shop to get this free pattern. And I did work on it some. So I'm not gonna take it out of the, well, actually I'm gonna take it out of the hoop because it, since it's being shelved, it needs to come out of the hoop. So let me go ahead and do that and I will show you. I did this on Fabric Flare whitewash board. And I think I'm going to have to be very mindful when I finish this that I want some of that fabric board to show. Let me just get my needle out of the way and my thread. So that is what I worked on. I mainly worked on um, this tombstone. So if you know this pattern, it was actually kitted for Arafil, Ar I think, yeah, Arafil floss. I did not have any of that at the time. So I actually kitted it up with DMC floss and I changed some of the colors. So I basically, I have seen this pattern done many different ways. Like I've seen the tombstone in a dark gray. I've seen it in a blue. I've seen it done in black even, I think. So this pattern, you can do pretty much anything you want. I picked colors that I liked from DMC, what I had in my stash, and that's what I wanted to do. So there's the fabric, and is that not fantastic? So I'm gonna be have to be very mindful and have a lot of the fabric showing. Otherwise, I don't think I'm gonna be as happy with that. Um, but that has been shelved for a little while anyhow. So I will go back to it. Um, I just think that I'm ready to start stitching some Christmas and some Halloween and, or Christmas, I'm sorry, and Thanksgiving. And so um, I don't, I don't want to continue to stitch Halloween right now because I don't have any chance of getting it done most likely. So, and washed and done all that. So I just, I'm moving on. Okay, so the next one that I worked at on and I'm gonna go ahead and take my needle minder off this one as well. And I'm gonna move my, I'm gonna take it out of the hoop because if I'm shelving it, it doesn't need to be in a hoop for a while. So I worked on this and I'm gonna go ahead and tell you there's a lot more stitching to be done. This is Scared Silly. And I love this piece. This is from Birds of a Feather. Let me get the pattern. So it's Birds of a Feather, Scared Silly. And I have the top part of the pumpkin started, but I have the whole pumpkin to do and then the bottom border. And so it's a lot. This is a lot of stitches. I don't know if you can see, but like this was just one night. There's a lot of stitches in here. Um, I love this on this material. This is actually a piece from my stash, so I'm not exactly 100% sure what it's called. I don't even know what maker it is. It was a leftover piece and I thought it worked. So it's what I used. I love it. I love the colors are popping. That cat kills me. The pumpkin is going to take a lot of stitching. Um, and as much as I've enjoyed it, I still have a lot of work to do on that. So that one is also shelved um, for now. So I'll put that back in my bag. That is actually a Halloween bag too. This is from Dot Dot Goose, Desi Dot Dot Goose Designs. And it's a Mickey bag. So I use a pattern holder. And so often I don't zip it unless I'm going, like I'm gonna take it out. Like I would actually fix all this to go in the bag, but just at my house, I don't care. I just stick it hanging out. Okay, so those I've showed, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so those are going on the shelf. I actually, um, 
I got a new needle minder off of Etsy, which is from the Supernatural show, if you watch that. Love it. Um, these are my hoops. I know I've talked to you guys before. They're no slip hoops. I get them off of Amazon and they have a groove in there. So like you can see the groove over here by my finger and they really do work well for me. I use a lot of picture this plus fabric, which is actually really, really soft. And that's a lot of the complaint is that the fabric is so, I don't want to say a lot of complaint because that's wrong. Um, but if you stitch on it, some people will complain it's a soft material and it is. And I love that about it because it's not your typical Ada fabric and I stitch pretty much exclusively on Ada. Um, and I, I love Picture This Plus fabric. Stitching it in a no slip hoop helps me. Okay, so it is time to change out my cross stitch boards, which I have showed you guys in a previous vintage. I am not exactly sure if I ever showed you um, my happy birthday ones. I might have showed this last time. If not, here they are in the frame. It was my son's, my um, youngest son's 13th birthday. So I have three of them that I hang up on my little cross stitch board. You can see it back in the video, one of them right there. It's blank right now, because these go on it. So it's right there, and it's all blank. Oops, this just came apart, hold on. All right, and then this one says happy birthday. And then it was Jesse's birthday, so he had his name up there. Everyone in my family has a um, one of these that I made them with their name and some kind of embellishment around it. I just did stars on his in different colors. Um, and so those were up for his birthday, but they will now be changed. And it is Halloween board time, which is my favorite. So this set will go up because it's one of my favorites. I do not know the name of this pattern. It has been long done, years done. So the little witch, and you can see, these are those cheap frames. I use, sometimes I use these. Sometimes I use ornaments. These are from Pottery Barn, Pottery Barn Kids. So at Christmas time, these ornaments will be there and I just interchange them. But I also use these as well. I have the circle, I have the oval set. That's the witch. Um, this is the ghost. This is the haunted house. I'm trying to not get a glare. I love that haunted house. Lots of backstitching on that one. But this one is my favorite, is Frankenstein and he's adorable. So if you um, are familiar with the pattern, leave me a comment. I will place it in the um, show notes if anybody knows what it is. Like I said, I don't have the pattern anymore. It's possible that I borrowed my sister's pattern and used it. So I tried to find it and I couldn't, um, but she may have it. So um, if you know what it is, let me know and I'll that way I could share it with other viewers. Also, if you ever watch my videos, I upload my videos overnight and then the next day I go in and I put the um, information in my drop down box the next, the following day. It takes so long to upload it to YouTube. I do it from my phone and then I go on a computer and I edit it. And so it's always done in two steps for me. So if you don't see any comments in the comment box below, check back. I will have them normally the next day. I think last time it took me two days to do it. So sorry about that. Um, okay, so my other Halloween, this is on the same fabric that the oval ones were. And actually it's some sort of linen. So I'm, I, um, I don't know what it is though. Um, let me put something behind that because that's hard to see. piece of paper. Okay, so that is the Dracula. And I believe these might have been out of the same book, but I'm not 100% sure. Maybe not. I want to say it's Debbie. Something with a Debbie in her name. Maybe not. Scarecrow. Black Cat. 
And they're very cutesy, which I think is cute. And a spider. So if anybody knows me, I hate spiders. Hate them. This is a cute spider. I'm okay with him. He's cute. Um, but I detest spiders. So I don't even kill spiders. One of my boys kills spiders for me. I call them. I'm like, there's a spider or my husband. He's the spider killer too. The cat should do a better job. I don't know. She never finds spiders. The spiders are like always like on the ceiling when I find them or something. I don't know. All right. So these are a Lizzie Kate, but I don't remember the name. So this is a pumpkin. And these are just little ones, little witch's feet. The little witch peeking, which I think is adorable. And then the cat. So they're really cute on my board. I like to have the purple. It's That was fun to stitch on. I think at the time when I stitched on them, I had mainly been stitching on white. So the purple was really fun to stitch on. Like I said, a lot of these are very old. I've done them for years. I think these are a black berry lane design. I think. So these are just silhouettes. They were actually in a pattern and if I'm not mistaken, they went down like this, like the trick-or-treaters went down the lane and I just pulled off different trick-or-treaters and made them into little minis for my board. And I don't know the name of this fabric. Like I said, they've been done for years, but I, th I this is my favorite one, the, the Frankenstein. He's so cute. So I just pulled apart the fabric or pulled apart the pattern and made them into ornaments. Um, I actually thought that that would be a fun challenge for myself is to one month take patterns that I own and kit them up into ornament sizes, just little pieces of them. I have so many patterns that I could do one a day or one, you know, start one a day. And I think that would be a fun challenge to take a bigger pattern and divide it up. I don't know which one's going to make the cut, but this is another fall set that I have. So these are Ravens and I did them on, I think this is 20 count. I don't enjoy 20 count, but there you go. I have done 20 count before. So it's all flying birds. Once again, I don't know the name of this pattern and I don't have it. I don't believe I have it. I could not find any of these. And this one is my favorite out of the group. So all various birds and they will, they will all go up on my boards. I'm excited to put up my Halloween. I think I have more Halloween somewhere, although I couldn't find it. So I think, I think that means I can do more Halloween stitching, right? I love stitching Halloween. Okay, so there is all of that. And let's see. I know I have some notes in here to make sure I mention everything. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, I have things piled up, so I'm gonna show you them as I work on them. Oh, this is my Jaws bag. I will link any bag that I can. I get them all off of Etsy. I will link the store name, like a little description of the bag and the store name. This is my Jaws. This is actually a knitting bag. It's the first time I've used anything like this. Um, okay, I have no idea why I have two pieces of fabric in this one bag. But um, this is a snap top bag. So I don't know if you can see. It's the first time that I'm using a snap top and it's um, craft like a monkey with the store name. Um, so far it's been fine. I love big bottom bags because I can put a lot of stuff in there. I can put my pattern holder and stuff. So I'm trying it out to see if I like the snaps. I kitted this up and this is Rust in Peace and I from um, Twin Peak Primitives. And I love this one mainly because we have a bunch of trucks. 
Um, we have a construction company, so I have a bunch of stuff and I have some stuff at my farm that are um, excess equipment from our yard in Charlotte, because we don't live in Charlotte, we live around Charlotte, um, comes to our farm and we park it here just so that we don't have everything at our business because it takes up every, it takes up room. And if we're not using it, we park it up at the farm. And so I think that's hysterical because we laugh about it all the time being at the farm. We have it all lined up. Um, my son says it's the auction yard. And my husband used to have goats when I first met him. So I, and I think this is the perfect pattern. So I kitted this up and apparently I kitted up with two different fabric colors. So this one is slightly darker. I don't think you can tell. Yeah, you can, a little bit on phone, on camera. So let me see what this is called. This is um, 14 count vintage country mocha, Ada. Um, and then I have to cut that down yet. And then this one is lamb's wool, 14 count. I haven't decided which one I'm doing, probably the darker. The sheep are white. We're going with the darker. So vintage country mocha it is. <laughs> there, see how quickly I can make a decision. Done. My husband will not agree with that statement. Um, okay, so I also kitted up Rustic Christmas Series Plaidville, and I got the pattern where they include all of the all of the houses. You can get the houses individually as well. I got them all together because I want to do them just like this. And I want to show you the plaid part on there. So do you see how they're all plaid? Is it focusing good? Is that not adorable? I loved that. And this is Twin Weeks, Twin Peaks Primitive. Say that 10 times fast. And um, I kitted that up and I have some Crystal Legacy picture this plus fabric that I'm gonna use. I don't think you can see a little bit of the sparkle there, or at least I can on camera. Um, so I kitted that up. I will start that sometime soon, I hope. Okay, I am not even going to attempt the name of this pattern. If you know how to say it, fantastic. <laughs> I do not. I'm going to hold it up so you can read it. I will hold it very close to the camera. I will also put it in the show notes. It is a fairy tale, what I call Disney print. Let me get it up to you very closely. If you'll see, here are, hold on, I have to look. Okay, so the tower is Rapunzel, um, Sleeping Beauty. Uh, let's see. It's a really small picture on the front. The seven drawers are over here. I don't think there's actually seven of them, but there's, well, maybe. One, two, three, four. Oh, yeah, maybe they're down here too. And the Wicked Witch. Um, there's Castle, there's a Little Mermaid. This is inspired. This is definitely not a full on Disney print, but I love this. So I actually kitted this up. I am going to be using um, Fresco from 16 Count from Picture This Plus. This is actually one of them that I got for my Epic Storybook sale and I ended up not using it. So Fresco has, it's mainly tan and I don't think this shows up in camera but there's a little bit of pink in here. So, and there's a little bit of blue over here. It's very, very light. It's very hard to catch on camera. Um, you can tell in the light, it looks different. Um, so I, I don't know that you can see it on camera, but that's what I'm going to use for that one. And I've kitted that up. I just love that pattern. I think it's really cute. Can you tell I was going through patterns? I was entering patterns in my, um, app the other day. I used the X stitch app and I had a container over the side where I keep dumping all my new patterns until they go into the app because I don't want to buy multiples and I was um, putting them in, which is not my favorite job to do, but I needed to do it. And so I kitted some things up. The other one I did is Kring Kringle and, lard and Wood Lard. 
And this is a plum straight sampler. Um, totally cute. And I've kitted it up on this fabric from, I'm pretty sure this is fabric flare. Cause in case you don't know, fabric flare like this, it's almost like it's screen printed. And then, so let me go up close. The other side of fabric flare is white. So their material is too, is not two-sided. You definitely have to stitch on the side that you like, on the printed side, but they have some really cool prints. So um, this one just looked old and grungy and, and there's lots of detail in it. And I think that Santa, the colors look fabulous on it. So it really popped. So I will be starting that sometime soon. Do you, do you see the problem here? I love starting new projects. I don't know if anybody else does, but I love it. Okay, this is another one that I have kitted up and this is Pair of Pilgrims from Lizzie Kate, which I think is adorable. I actually was on a post on Facebook and I found somebody that will finish these into stand up, what I'm gonna call dolls or stand up people, just like they're on the front. That is beyond my skill. I, I don't sew. My husband thinks I'm crazy because I don't know how to sew. My husband knows how to sew, which, and, and kind of the story behind that is his grandmother sewed and did craft shows, I guess. And then his mom sewed and she was like a really good seamstress. She would do um, lingerie and stuff, which I I don't know anything about sewing, but apparently lace work and all that is harder. I don't know, you could be talking great to me. I don't I don't know how to sew. So I found somebody that will finish these as stand-up people and now I can do them. So I'm so excited. And I kitted this up, this fabric, I wanna say it's from Fabric Flare as well. And I'm gonna do it on this like tan plaid gingham, if you wanna call it. I love this. I'm hoping the people will look good on it. I think they will because they're solid. Once you start them, this is there's no holes in there. So I really think they'll look good on this plaid fa fabric. And as soon as I saw it, I knew I wanted to use that. So that's kind of a little different, but I kind of like the unexpected. Okay, the next project that I am currently kitting up. Um, so this is a Jan Lynn kit. I have had this for years. It's called Nativity and it's all the Nativity care, you know, people, Mary and Joseph, the three wise men, there's a shepherd, there's a sheep, a, I think that's a donkey. Yes, a cow, baby Jesus, I, a camel. I love this. So once again, I'm going to start this. It came with fabric. I'm trying to debate whether I want to do this on just white Ada, um, or if I want to change out this Ada and do it on a cream. I don't know, and I would have to do a floss toss on it. All of the floss, There's more. It's, I guess, supposed to be on these cards. It's not. It's not. So I don't know which cards, like I don't, these aren't labeled, these aren't labeled. There is a directory on here. See card A, they are in there. These are not. I don't know if this is DMC or not. I Googled it online and there's a conversion and they have their own floss. I, I cannot tell if their kits use their floss or DMC. It kind of feels like DMC and it kind of doesn't. And I don't know whether it's just because it's been in this bag for years and years and years. I actually think older DMC floss feels a little different than the DMC floss now. So I don't know. This is a hot mess. I, I don't like this. This, I'm not gonna use this. So this is going to 
I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I don't know. Uh, these, I mean, I, I don't know. Um, they also included some, like, here's the whole Ada. And they also included some felt for the backing. I totally think that I can use better fabric for the backing. Um, but like the pattern is huge. So I'm actually going to have to make a copy of these pages. So this is just the thread list. Um, the patterns on the back, I'm not going to show that, but it, it, it's a hot mess. That whole floss thing. I'm not, I don't normally like the flossing kits anyhow. And I want to make sure if I'm going to put in all this time into making those that they're done with DMC fabric. So the, or threads so that they're, last so they last and they can wash nicely i don't even know what this is this is not gonna work out for me so i've started to kit this up but i am so excited to start this so it'll be an ongoing project for a while but a fun project so i have a couple more that i'm kidding um that i didn't get around to kidding quite yet with material but i've started getting the floss and one and i I know it's a Halloween stitch. The Field Mice? I think it's called Field Mouse Hollow from With Thy Needle and Thread. I love this pattern so much. I love those little mice. I just wanna start it. So <laughs> I'll start. And then this is a manger set from the same company that was the um, princess set or the fairy tale. I, I'll call it fairy tale. Once again, I don't know what this says. I don't know. Somebody knows, tell me what it says. Does it say nativity? Cause that's what I'm calling it. <laughs> so if it doesn't and it says something crazy, I'm sorry. Cause I, I don't, I can't read it. So um, the pattern is pretty simple. Um, I loved it. It is different than the other nativity. So I like, I don't know that I'm gonna start this right away but I really like it. So I have those two out to do. Okay, I did some, I started um, A Very Merry Christmas Town from the Frosted Pumpkin. I have not gotten far, but I have worked on the top of the candy shop and a little bit down. So I started this on Saturday, I think. Saturday, yeah, I think Saturday. So I got a little start on that. I was ready for some Christmas stitching and I got my tasteful. Okay, so this is the Mysterious Map Sal. I am still slowly going on this, but I am working on my border. It does not look impressive. I promise you there is so much time in this. So I, um, I have to do the whole border and then I, and I actually am using a bigger piece of fabric than it calls for. I think when I figured it out, I would have to cut like two inches off the fabric. And that seems silly to me to cut two inches off the fabric and not be able to use it for really anything else. And I thought, I'm just going to stitch it. If you, if you could see on this side, I left plenty of room for finishing. So I just can't imagine cutting off two inches. I'm just, I'm expanding my map by that much. So, um, and this is pictured this plus, I don't remember the name of the fabric, but I can link it down below. It has, a, you can see it there. It does have a sparkle. You can see it a little bit on camera. I love this. I think it's like, I, I don't know, techno type. I'm not saying it right. And that's not the name. So I'll link it down below, I'm sorry. Um, but this is a, um, Sal, I don't think there's anything that I can show you on here. Yeah, that's all pattern. But eventually, eventually I'm going to get to roll the dice and do my water border. Very excited about that. I still have to fin fill in color in here. I'm just doing the outline. I have to put color in here. As you can tell, 
I am not in a hurry for this one and I'm just enjoying it as I go. So, um, it's a fun stitch. I, I like it. Um, and, but I'm so excited to roll my dice. Okay. Let me just move some stuff out of the way. I'm, I'm working down my piles. Okay, I have kitted up another one, Merry and Bright from the Frosted Pumpkin. I have a hair in my mouth. It's kind of wild hair day. I don't know what's going on. I have hair everywhere today. This is Merry and Bright from the Frosted Pumpkin. So cute. Um, and I originally had a different color material and it wasn't, I, I didn't like it. So I'm actually going with Crystal Truffle from Picture This Plus, and it's a sparkle. And that's actually very close to what they show. It's kind of done in a pink. I know you probably can't tell that on camera, but it's a pink color. I had like a cranberry color and I really wanted to use it, but the colors, I had changed them and then I didn't like them and it was a whole big thing. I still did um, kit it up with a change of the red. I wasn't crazy about the bright, bright color red, so I changed it. I'm not 100% sure if that's the color that I'm keeping, so I haven't, because um, I haven't started it yet. So once I start it, I'll know whether I'm keeping that color or not. Okay, I might have showed you this already. I think I did. This is Fabric Flare Speckled Hen, and I am going to be doing um, Autumn Sampler from the Frosted Pumpkin. I have not started this and it's fall stitching. It's not Halloween though. Like I could totally have this out in Thanksgiving because there's pumpkin pie. Then, yeah, this is more Thanksgiving. I could totally start this. Since I said I'm done with Halloween, I'm never done with Halloween, but I'm ready for those whips to go away for a little bit anyhow. Okay, so some new project bags that I have. This is from Liam Loves You. Once again, I will link it down below, but an adorable Harry Potter little cartoons. I love that. Look at Dobie. Aw. I loved that. And then um, this is also a Harry Potter. It's the newsprint with Sirius Black. And on the back, it is so cute. These are the perfect size for ornament projects. So I love that one. And then this is some Mario Brothers. In the day, I played Mario Brothers a lot, Super Mario. Um, and I thought this was so cute and cheerful. So I loved all of that. Princess Peach. She might have been on the front. She was. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but we played the game. I don't remember what it was when my son was little that you got to do the characters and then you competed. And I don't know. We played that and he loved it. So I just thought that was fun. Okay. I have also kitted up the Frosted Pumpkin, the Nutcracker Parade. There's no pattern. This is not the pattern yet because they haven't released it. It's a sal, and so we'll get pieces of it. I am so excited. I have all the thread, but I don't have the call for material. And the fabric is Nessie. I don't have Nessie, but I have a couple pieces that I totally could use. I just haven't decided which one it's gonna be. This is Sterling, and it's kind of like a gray-green. Very hard to catch on camera. I don't think it's showing it, showing up more gray right now. It definitely has a hue of green. And then I have Tempest, and this is more of a green. So I'm not 100% sure which one I'm gonna use yet. Um, I did take advantage of the picture this plus uh, fat, or, I'm sorry, one eighth sale. And I know I ordered a Nessie. So if it gets in time before the pattern officially launches, then I will actually have a piece of Nessie to use. If I don't, I clearly have some other things I can use and I will do that. 
Okay, so I have some haul, but I'm gonna show you my last whip. And this is the epic storybook style that I'm doing. And it's a lot of fabric. So let me get the front page. So this is from Clouds Factory. And it has all of the storybook characters from Disney. And you can't see it very good on this. I, I don't think it's gonna focus. It's an amazing pattern. It's amazingly big, but it's amazing. Okay, so I have gotten quite far. So I did not choose any of the fabrics I ordered to start this. I actually chose a barn wood fabric. Reason being, <laughs> And this is how my girlfriend justified it. All of the fairy tales have forests in them. And this looks like a forest fabric, I think, or wood, which represents the forest. I don't know. My problem was this is such a big pattern that you have to use a yard of fabric for 18, or I'm sorry, for 14 count, which is what I wanted to do it on. I wanted 14 count. I wanted this big glorious pattern. Um, I didn't know if I would want like a big thing of pink or purple on my craft wall. So, cause it's gonna go in my craft room cause I have three boys. They do not care about Disney princesses. Um, but I chose Barnwood. So this is very hard. As you can see, this is a massive piece of fabric. <laughs> so literally I have my hands out and I can hold it. So I have, I started at the top. I've done the, completed the castle. I'm to the side of the castle. I have to finish this top portion, which is just scroll work. And then I'm going to start down the side and start my first storybook character. It is amazing. It, I love it. What I did find is that on my castle, I actually used the wrong color purple. Like the, there's a light purple in here and then there's a dark purple and I reversed them. I liked it, mine's unique. I also did a lime green that calls for here, but I missed the color change here and did lime green down. It's like the vines on the castle. I think you can see it better. And I just don't think it matters. What I did find is I blow up my charts on my printer. And I think when I blow it up, um, when I from printing it out and then blowing it up, I just think the quality wasn't that good. And so some of the symbols were hard for me to read. So I've actually put it on my Kindle and I can open it up and just verify, you know, like blow it up and verify it on my Kindle, which is much better, but then I can stitch from my pattern. So um, lots to go on this, but I am enjoying each and every stitch. So if you would like to join us in stitching this, it is Epic Storybook Sal. Hashtag that on Instagram so that I can see your progress and everybody can see your progress and chit chat. You can do all of it. You can do one storyline of it. You can do one character, whatever you want to do. These would make adorable ornaments. Like if you took just some of your favorite characters and did them, how cute would that be? And there's some great, there's some great um, characters in here. Let me see if I can show you a better picture. So like, yeah, here's Brave. Like you could take some of those characters from Brave and make them into an ornament. Brave would not be my first choice. Um, but look how cute that is of Cinderella. So I'm very excited to move on from the frame, but the frame is important. So, you know, gotta get that done. Um, it's a lot of pattern in here. It's a lot of fabric, but not everybody is stitching the whole thing and feel free to stitch what you want.
Okay, so I'm gonna quickly go through this because I have a little bit of haul. I went down and picked up um, my winter, welcome to Winterfell from Country Magic Stitch on Etsy. I framed it, it is on my Instagram because it is way high up on my wall. So I can't show you that here, but it's on my Instagram account. And then I also had a present framed. I will take pictures and show that after um, after I give it as a present. I will have to show it in pictures, not video, because we're going to that. Okay, so some of these were in the clearance um, bin at Stitch and Frame, my local um, needlework shop. The Great Cheshire Pumpkin, which I thought was cute. Even if I took elements like this witch and made her into ornament, she's super cute. And this is from Tempting Tangles Design. And it was marked down. And then I have Teresa Covert. This was not marked down, but I wanted it. This, the angel, it is Oh My Soul. And I love this one, I think it's so pretty. This was Harvest Blessing, which was stitched in her shop window. And I loved it that it was a pumpkin, but it's a Thanksgiving scene. And so I really liked it. I like the little like boat, the Mayflower. Love that. This was marked down springtime from Abbey Rose Designs. Um, this was Bunny and Tulips from Abbey Rose Designs. It was also marked down. I like, am I showing this? As, no, okay. I like the flowers. I like the bunny except for his eyes freak me out. I think if you put a black dot in his eyes, they would be fine. So I'm going to have to fix his eyes. This was also in the clearance bin. Moo, I mean boo. I thought that was cute. And that is from Needle Bling Designs. This one I've actually looked at from Lindy Stitches, Bloom Where You're Planted. And look at that, that is so cute. And it was marked down. Uh, Jolly Soul, this was also marked down from Erica Michaels. really hard to see. Um, on the on the front they show it done in like very bright colors and on the back they show it done in more muted colors. So I'm not actually sure which color palette it is but that's something I can work out. Then I got, these were also marked down, um, Early American John Hancock from Little House Needleworks. This is Early American Paul Revere from Little House Needleworks. Um, this says Let It Snow, Fa La La La, and Christmas from Christmas Mood Pillows from, uh, I don't even know the name. I wanna say, I, I don't know who designs this one. It's up top, but Manny Di Donna? That doesn't sound right, but. So cute. Praise Worth Stitches. This is Santa's Midnight Ride. I love Santa and the Sleigh, so that was super cute. So I had to get that one. It was not marked down, but I got that one. And then from My Big Toe Designs, I got Marriage, and it says Marriage lets you annoy one special person every day for the rest of your life. I adore this pattern. I actually want to stitch this one for my husband because I find that hysterical. So, I also got some Mill Hill frames from my needlework shop. I got um, Mary Make a Mini Bear from Hand and Heart. I'm sorry, Heart in Hand, so sorry. I'm gonna rename the company. Um, and this was an unusual one to see marked down, but it is Main Street Millery Shop. And it was a kit and it was marked down as well. 
And I think these are the summer spring houses and I didn't have this one. Um, and then I also picked up some of the, um, like I got gold too. This is, I don't know what color this is called. I don't know, it's a silver and I like it better than the Krenlik stuff. So I got silver and gold. I'm using the gold on the frosted pumpkin stitchery on a very merry Christmas town. And it works better for me. So I like that brand. Okay, that is all that I have to show. I do have my giveaway from last week is from Lizzie K. Thank. Sorry. And the winner is Diane Mitchell. So Diane, email me. Um, my email is made by Michelle McGraw at gmail.com. I will put that in the show notes and send me your address with your name. Make sure, so I make sure it all matches. And um, I will send this out to you. So congratulations, Diane. So um, the other, my giveaway this week is another one that I think if you got it, you could stitch it before Christmas. Where's the party from Lizzie Kate. And I love those little elf shoes. They are adorable. So for to be entered in this giveaway, like my video, subscribe, and leave me a comment. And I want to know because I answer questions that people have in the comment section of my video. A lot of times I answer you back, but then I get the same question again and again. So my, my question for this week to answer for the giveaway is, do you want me, if you ask me a question, do you want me to answer it in my video, in my next video or in comments? So you're either going to comment video or comments. Simple enough. Which, where would you like to see it? If you haven't asked me a question, are you interested in the other questions that people are asking? Are you interested in those answers? So let me know which one that is and you're entered into the giveaway. So once again, like and subscribe, leave me a comment. Thank you for everybody who has subscribed. Thank you for everybody who watches each week, each two weeks, because I do them every two weeks. Um, I'm always very humbled that people actually watch this. And so I'm trying to, I'm, I'm always like shocked that people actually watch this. So thank you so much for that. Um, I don't have any shout outs this week because I watched various YouTube videos at Disney and I, I want to make sure that I get people's names right. And so I didn't have my little handy dandy Canva with me that I write all of my cross stitching down in. I didn't have it with me. And I wanna make sure that when I watch your video and I enjoy it, that I can give you a proper shout out. There are so many floss tubers that I love and enjoy and that I've found. Some of them are new, some of them are been around for many, 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 many videos, way longer than me. Um, and so I thank everybody who watches and thank everybody for any shout outs. Um, I will be back next time with shout outs um, so that I can properly get everybody's name. But I really do enjoy a lot of floss tubes and, and enjoy watching them. And I try I always like the video and I try to always comment. Um, I don't always do the giveaways because may or may not be something that I want. It may be something that I'm just like, yeah, somebody else needs to win that. Um, but I like to comment on something from their video to that, so they know that I watched because I know that um, a lot of time goes into them and and I enjoy watching them and I want them to know that. So thank you for everybody who does comment on mine. That's always amazing to me. Okay, this video was super long this week. I'm so sorry. Um, I hope you guys have a good week stitching and I will talk to you later.